Today we're going back into the water to learn even more about underwater photography. Now if you haven't watched part one, I recommend doing that now and I'll wait for you right here. In this video, we'll learn about different types of underwater photography and equipment. We'll get up close with tiny clownfish and giant sharks. We'll explore colorful reefs and even more shipwrecks. All right, grab your wetsuit and let's go. If you ever eavesdrop on a conversation between underwater photographers, you might hear one ask the other, wide angle or macro? These terms refer to types of camera lenses, but what that question is really asking is are the subjects you're photographing big or small, and are you going for a broader picture or focusing in on detail? A standard wide-angle lens can capture a large field of view and is the setup many photographers use. Shooting wide is ideal for medium to large subjects like turtles, dolphins, and sharks. This is also the best setup for capturing underwater landscapes like coral reefs, walls, and caves. Wide-angle is also commonly used to photograph shipwrecks. One of the most important requirements underwater is to get up close to your subject, and using a wide-angle lens allows you to get close and still fit the subject in frame. Okay, let's take a look at some images captured using a wide-angle setup. For those shots when you need to get super close to the largest animals, a fisheye lens is the ultimate choice. A fisheye is an ultra-wide lens and is popular for subjects like sharks, whales, and mantas. That's a whale shark, the biggest fish in the ocean, and it's coming in so close it almost knocks me over. The only way we can fit the entire animal in frame is with a fisheye. A fisheye lens produces an effect called barrel distortion, which causes the edges of the image to become rounded. If you've ever looked through the peephole in a door, you know what I'm talking about. Underwater, the effects are less noticeable since we don't have as many straight lines, but you'll definitely see it in some cases. Now let's look at some fisheye images. What if we want to photograph small creatures like tiny fish and crustaceans? In this situation, photographers will opt for a macro lens which has strong magnification. Macro allows us to zoom in on detail like these clownfish and the anemones they call home. We can also capture textures and create more abstract images, like this close-up of a brain coral. This is called a flamingo tongue sea snail and is about the size of a peanut. There are many different tiny creatures with spectacular colors and shapes, and macro photographers simply love them. Here are some examples of macro images. So we've covered both wide and macro photography, and it can be tempting to learn it all. But if you're new or not yet experienced in underwater photography, I'd suggest sticking to one type of setup. Learn it thoroughly before taking on the other. Way more important than camera gear is your ability to be cool and relaxed underwater. If you look like this, it's probably too early to introduce a camera and a good idea to work on your diving skills first. If 
you remember from part one, some colors of the spectrum are completely absorbed as we dive deeper, and visibility is a major consideration. It's likely that you'll want to add strobes to your setup to bring back the beautiful colors that would otherwise not be visible. Instinctively, you might think the best way to position your lights is to aim them directly at the subject, but that's an amateur mistake. In this instance, we've pointed our lights toward a subject and come away with a very messy image. We call this effect backscatter. It happens when all the particles in front of our lens are lit up as the light beam hits them directly. Instead, the proper way is to aim our lights so just the edge of the light beam hits the subject. Often I'll position my strobes so that they point slightly outward. This ensures that the light beams will never pass directly in front of the lens. Another thing to look out for when using strobes is that you've dialed in the correct level of power. Many fish are shiny or light colored and will be completely blown out if the strobes are set to a high power. If you're photographing silver scaly fish like tarpon or barracuda, keep this in mind. The last topic I'll touch on today is composition. I could make an entire series of videos on this subject, but for now I'll leave you with one tip, and that's to avoid placing your subject dead center unless you have a very specific reason. For example, if you're deliberately highlighting symmetry. Sometimes it does make sense to center your subject, but in general, you're more likely to create an interesting image if you follow a principle called the rule of thirds. If you imagine a 3x3 grid on your canvas, use these guidelines to help align the different elements of your image, including your subject, your foreground, and your background. Let's look at a few examples. In this image, the shark's face is the subject and is off to the right. How about this one? Yes, our shipwreck is in the center horizontally, but notice that most of the subject is positioned along the lower third of the image. Before we go, I want to mention my good friends at Backscatter.com where I buy my underwater photo gear. Definitely check them out through the links in the description or feel free to message me in the comments if you have any questions. Also, if you're in the US and want to learn how to dive, I can recommend dive centers in the Northeast or in South Florida. I'll leave those links below as well. Alright, that's all I've got for today. Be sure to subscribe, follow on Instagram, and bookmark my website. Thanks for watching.